good evening friends after a long time i am uh, coming again this time with a different theme that is case discussion and viva because lots of pgs requested for this uh, you must have already listened to my uh, lectures on youtube and thanks for your appreciation today we are going to start this new series uh, this would definitely help you how to answer in the exams especially the case discussion and viva today uh, i am going to discuss heart disease complicating pregnancy before we go on i want to uh, tell the rules of the game that you need not reveal your uh, name if you don't want to and name of your college also but the uh, important thing here is to discuss the case and learn you don't have to worry at all if you cannot answer i have made it almost like a teaching session rather than an examination session however the proceedings will go on as in the examination only all of you know me that uh, i am uh, murli thar pai currently working as dean in sikkim manipal institute of medical sciences sikkim formerly i was professor in uh, obstetrics and gynecology at kasturba medical college manipal i was uh, there almost 34 out of 35 years i should say and um, now i have been here for last two and a half years so let's straight away jump into the case discussion um i may just give some names to the person who is presenting just to otherwise i will be i will not be able to communicate so today's uh, pg i will just call her shreya it may not be her actual name uh, shreya are you there yes i'm here yeah okay so before we uh, go on with the case discussion why should we really worry about a case of cardiac disease why should an obstetrician be thorough with the knowledge of managing a case of heart disease uh sir because in case of a heart disease patient when they enter pregnancy they are prone to get exaggerated whatever the heart disease they are facing and they can go into complication for example they can go into congestive cardiac failure pulmonary edema etc and apart from the maternal complication the fetal complication also associated with it if a cardiac patient were to get pregnant for example preterm delivery fgr which can finally lead to iud so we are we need to be concerned about all of these things and manage a patient of cardiac disease in pregnancy thoroughly so that's a good start actually uh, the first ball you have hit for a four i should say uh, that's what i want to tell all the post graduates you must have that uh, adequate confidence in the exam you should not sound uh, too confident or over confident at the same time you should not be worried at all while answering uh, you should answer uh, uh, to the point as uh, she has does uh, and um, let me just add to what she has said our concerns are basically because cardiac disease still significantly contributes to maternal deaths it's called an indirect cause of maternal death uh, along with other me medical diseases like you know anemia for example so we have to definitely be aware of this problem and we should know how to manage this problem as well if not mortality they cause significant morbidity as enlisted by shreya and uh, they also have lots of icu admissions and the incidence is actually now increasing we thought that cardiac disease does not exist much but the incidence is increasing and also the now the proportion of congenital heart diseases are more than the erstwhile rheumatic heart diseases and some of the complications which they are already enlisted i want to sum it up for the benefit of the post graduates she correctly pointed out congestive cardiac failure because the pregnancy itself is a bigger challenge to the body and physiological changes are there which we are going to probably discuss little later in next question so this will pose more challenge or more effort on the heart so heart will go for congestive cardiac failure there will be pulmonary edema pulmonary embolism and they can also have concurrent infections and that can go to rheumatic carditis subacute bacterial endocarditis and if it's a case of aneurysms or coarctation of aorta during labor during the physical stress there can be rupture of these aneurysms and coarctations as far as the fetus is concerned as she correctly said there is a good chance of preterm delivery this is basically because of hypoxia that can always exist during 
uh, cardiac disease, complicating pregnancy, and that would lead to prematurity and a whole lot of problems for the fetus. Then the most important thing is FGR. Again, because of the lack of oxygenation and nutrition, the blood supply basically to the fetus. Then there can be sometimes sudden intrauterine death and asphyxia in the fetus. So with this preamble, or shall we say the prelude, Shall we go on to the case? Of course, with all this, there will be increased perinatal mortality. So now you can present your case. Yes, sir. I'm presenting a case of a 27-year-old, G2 MTP1, who presented to presenting a 38 breastfeed. Homemaker, married of one year. Can I stop you at just this juncture? Which is the best yes, age, younger age or older age for a heart disease patient to become pregnant? Younger age is better for heart disease because with age, the heart muscles themselves deteriorate irrespective of pregnancy. So if they were to get pregnant at a later age, that would cause problem in itself. Yes, that's correct. I agree with you totally. So if they come before becoming pregnant and ask for your advice, especially nowadays, the age of marriage itself is late. And when they conceive, they are career oriented sometimes and or they are busy with other things. Uh, so they would like to postpone the pregnancy and they would like to ask the advice. If they ask your advice, as you correctly said, we must advise them to conceive as early as possible because as the age advances, heart disease worsens. Continue. Yes. So she is married for one year, non consanguineous marriage. Patient was asymptomatic when she presented to us for routine antenatal checkup at seven weeks of amenorrhea. She was a known case of rheumatic heart disease, status post balloon mitral valvotomy with NYHA class 1. Okay, good. Now, here is a case who probably was knowledgeable. She is probably educated. She knows that she's a case of heart disease. She also could tell you that she has undergone balloon mitral valvotomy and all those things. But suppose a patient comes to you just like that and she's apparently healthy. She doesn't have any symptoms. She doesn't even know that she's a case of heart disease because she never had any problem, she never went to doctor. So it is our responsibility in every single case that comes to us, even in the first ever visit, that we must uh, you know, suspect and rule out heart disease in every single patient. Do you agree with me, Shreya? Yes, absolutely. If you agree with me, my next question to you is that, how will you suspect and confirm the diagnosis of heart disease, especially during pregnancy, because it's slightly a tricky situation. Uh, why do I say that, Shriya? Why do I say that it is a tricky situation? It is tricky because through the course, like pregnancy, the hyperdynamic circulation. So through its course, it itself mimics heart disease. So yes, that that's is what the reason I always tell uh, uh, the postgraduates, even undergraduates. The teachings in medicine department, exactly, they do not hold good in OBG. Because as Shriya said, there is hyperdynamic circulation during pregnancy and the pregnancy changes, the physiological changes, most of the times mimic the some of the symptoms of heart disease. You know, like in normal pregnancy, these findings are normal. In medicine, they are not normal. For example, apex beat is always displaced more laterally because of the growing uterus. And there is slight distension of jugular veins always. There is a loud first heart sound. And third heart sound also can be heard sometimes. Again, all these are because of hyperdynamic circulation. There could be some functional murmurs. That doesn't mean that she is a case of heart disease, isn't it? Yes. And then there is ejection yes. systolic murmur, sometimes a soft, short ejection systolic murmur, especially if the patient has got anemia. So it is always heard. And yes. there can be always mammary suffol. So, but how do you make a concrete diagnosis before that? What are the indicators of heart disease before we go for the diagnosis? What symptoms may indicate heart disease? So if the patient were to present to us with chest pain, palpitation, breathlessness, syncope, hemoptysis, pro progressive orthopnea, or paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Now, those out are of the these symptoms, symptoms, which is definitive of heart disease, because you earlier said, Palpitation is not abnormal in pregnancy. Some orthopnea is not abnormal. Okay, so chest pain also sometimes can be there. Out of these symptoms, which definitely points towards heart disease? 
paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea is the symptom yes, that you, definitely the points us on the head yeah the last one that is called air hunger suddenly patient gets up in the night and there is a hunger for air this nobody will have just because of pregnancy unless she has got a heart disease similarly there are some indicators or signs so what are those signs which would definitely suggest probably she is a case of heart yes, disease sir. Yes, sir. So, signs like pathological edema. What do you mean cyanosis. by pathological edema, Shreya? In a patient, in a pregnant patient, it is usual for third space fluid shift to be present. So, edema can be present, especially if the patient has been lying down a prone position for a long time. It is, uh, sorry, standing position for a long time. It is possible to have pedal edema. But yes. if the patient were to have persistent edema despite corrective measures, that's called pathological edema. Very good. Also, if the edema is right from the beginning, the like second semester, you know, as you correctly yeah. said, physiological yes, edema sir. usually is seen towards everything is at the end. And uh, pregnancy, yeah. that is third trimester, end of the day, end of the body. Whereas if the edema yes, is sir. present in the in the face or in the palm or even during the second trimester all the time, so that's a pathological edema, which would probably indicate congestive cardiac failure, isn't it? So, if the patient yes, has sir. sinusitis, what type of heart disease you suspect? Uh, this is congenital heart disease. Heart. Yeah, congenital it could heart. be mixed, but mostly congenital. So there congenital. could be persistent JVP. Some small raise is okay, but persistent increase is not okay. And split second sound, yes. loud P two. Okay. So now I come to the important question: that is, how do you pin the diagnosis? during pregnancy because all others can be mimicked by a normal pregnancy, but these points cannot be mimicked by a normal pregnancy. What are they? Yes. So for example, presence of a diastolic murmur in case yes, of pregnancy. Yes, that's very, okay. very, very important. So diastolic murmur cannot be there in a normal pregnancy unless the patient has a heart disease. Yes. That's very good. Next. Yes, Usually in pregnancy, we have a soft systolic, short-lasting murmur, ejection systolic. But if we were to have a pan-systolic murmur or a systolic murmur with a thrill, that yes. would point us to a cardiac disease. Very then good. along with that, if we have pathological cardiomegaly that is diagnosed Yes, by very echo, good. It's not the, just because of the shift of apical impulse. That is physiological. Yes. But here is pathological yes. cardiomegaly, which you can diagnose by ECHO or EKG or ECG. Yes. Yes, and arrhythmia, if arrhythmia is present, that is always pathological in the patient. Yeah, but what I want to highlight here is one should not wait till arrhythmia sets in. If arrhythmia sets yeah, in and then you diagnose heart disease, you hardly have a few hours to uh, you know, spare. Yeah. Patient is already in a yes. very bad condition. So a good doctor, yeah. a smart doctor in the first visit, just a cursory stethoscope on the heart. If you can hear a diastolic murmur or a pan-systolic murmur, you should immediately suspect this could be a case of heart disease. And of course, there onwards, nowadays, we have most of the hospitals, the facility of cardiologists. We will send it to cardiology department. They will do ECG and ECHO, and they will confirm the diagnosis. Arrhythmia is, of course, yes. a very large stage. We should not be waiting till that to occur. So far, so good, Shreya. Yes. So let's go on. Let's see. You continue with your case. Yes, sir. Uh, this was a natural conception. Pregnancy was any, confirmed. Any using particular the reason why you said this? Natural conception? Uh, yeah, because, you know, maybe, uh, you know, you, you would have asked it as a routine question. But uh, in the examination, you should be smart enough to immediately back up. Because what happens, examiners will ask you every single point, what you ask, there should be a meaning behind it. You cannot say, I just routinely asked it. So if it is a case of infertility, mm -hmm. probably she would have received so many drugs or she would be a case of obesity, PCOS and insulin resistance. So many things are there which would, you know, further complicate a case of heart disease. So a natural conception yes, is always welcome compared to a conception after a fertility right. enhancing treatment. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the pregnancy was confirmed using a urinary pregnancy test at 45 days of amenorrhea at home. She was a booked case at KH and confirmation scan was done case? at 7. A I case had removed KH patient... to mask the... <laughs> about your... It doesn't matter. It's always uh, better to reveal your institution if you want because you should be proud of your institution. 
but if somebody objects if you are uh, you know if you don't want to reveal it's all right yes of course it's a uh, it's a book case is it good to have a book case what do you mean by book case yeah a book case is a person who has had more than 3 visits with us at least which three also visits, implies yeah. at least 3 visits with us so this means that we were able to follow up the patient the patient themselves for regular but let's say 3 visit days treatment. third month fourth month and fifth month is it a book case no so that she never comes to you 3 3 visits no. <laughs> so what is the most um, important thing no. the third visit should be within a month of the expected date of delivery why do okay. i say that why okay, do sir. i say that just guess and answer because uh, when we are closing to the term or closing delivery there are so many change the, we need to find a concrete management plan that That's we need to thing. proceed forward especially That's in high risk patients anything else so i always give this general formula to all the pgs and ugs that is one thing you should remember all the problems of pregnancy they show up after 20 weeks number one general point number one general formula number two is that all the problems worsen as the pregnancy advances take it for preeclampsia for matter take it diabetes take anything for that matter they keep on worsening towards the end so if the patient does not come towards the end it's of no use to us she may suddenly land up yeah. in uh, you know icu itself or she may land up in an emergency situation so a booked case no doubt should have minimum 3 visits but the last visit should be within 1 month of the expected yeah. date of delivery Delicious. otherwise it's almost like a unbooked case for us yes of course okay. ideal antenatal visit and all i don't have to discuss at this level they are totally 15 <laughs> yes. that is one one per four weeks up to seven months and then twice a once in two weeks up to 36 weeks thereafter it is once in a week so that's the best yes sir. yeah yes sir uh confirmation scan was done at seven weeks pog which was told to be normal with excellent dates yeah so we need so to know the are... dates properly uh, uh, why do you think the dates are very important because it's we are the dates that will be able to calculate the estimated date of delivery yes. and like you said it is through that last month or that last crucial period it depends when the delivery will happen and accordingly management plan will change also we would know whether she is going in for any fgr you know if she's lacking from the dates you know that's how we know about the fgr and also whether she is going in for a preterm delivery and things like that so an excellent yeah. date is always good so that we can take appropriate decisions whether to deliver her now or whether we can wait for some more time so going further yes, uh, uh further when pregnancy was confirmed for the patient cardiology consultation was immediately sought uh, wherein they did echo which was normal and she was advised to continue pregnancy and she was prophylactically started on penicillin 400 mg bd yeah at this juncture it's appropriate for me to ask you how do you do that counseling part you know which i was asking earlier uh, one is pre pregnancy counseling and once you diagnose the pregnancy that counseling so which this part we have already did that no delay in the conception woman with well yes, compensated sir. heart may conceive isn't it so and yes sir. they should always follow a small family norm that means maximum two children and what should be the gap between the children two years six years 10 uh, two months. years yes two years should two be the years. gap Not so yes. all should be over by the age of let's say thirty, so that would be the ideal thing for a heart disease patient. Others probably it is negotiable. Similarly, we should sure. uh, uh, use conventional contraceptives for spacing rather than the hormonal contraceptives, which can have adverse effect. Mm -hmm. Isn't yes. it? So how do you yes, counsel pre uh, intra-pregnancy? Pre intra-pregnancy. Yeah, we pre-pregnancy. Apart from counseling, we should do a thorough cardiac evaluation. And if she is grade one and two, which we are going to discuss a little later, they can definitely conceive, right? Yes, and sir. in first yes, trimester, sir. if she comes straight away before, without asking you, she has become pregnant and she straight away comes. If she is grade mm -hmm. one and two, she may continue, okay? Yes. And grade three and four, mm -hmm. she should do MTP. Why this prescription? 
So because uh, like we have discussed before, cardiac disease will decompensate even further as the pregnancy continues. If a patient already is in NYHA grade three and four, they don't have any further scope to decompensate. So first we need to stabilize the patient, no, make sure she is no, okay. No further then... scope to decompensate, they will definitely going to uh, die probably, right? Uh, so they right. will you know, they will have congestive cardiac failure and it will be going to be a very difficult situation. So if she's already grade three and four in first trimester where nothing much has happened, second and trimester things will worsen and in labor it will further worsen by one more grade. So that's why probably it is wiser to advise MTP and nowadays we have safer methods of first trimester MTP. Okay, so that is why this kind of a prescription is given. Whereas if she is yes. in second trimester, the same thing, grade one and two, they can continue. But grade three and four, we may ask her to actually continue pregnancy because the risk of continuation in MTP are almost similar. The second trimester, we always call it like a mini labor. In the Western countries, 23 weeks is good enough to deliver also, isn't it? So yes. that's why we yes. are a little bit in a dicey situation, uh, whether to go for termination of pregnancy or whether to continue pregnancy. We always take the help of a cardiologist and maybe cardiothoracic surgeon. Sometimes we may do a intervention also in the second trimester because this is considered a stable trimester, isn't it? Yeah. So we can yes. ask the help of a cardiothoracic surgeon. But whatever it is, if she is in grade three or four in second trimester, there is no question of allowing her to go home. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. We have to say that she has to be in the hospital. Hospital. And she has to be throughout our care. We'll go ahead. Yes, we are left with another maybe yes, 10 sir. minutes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, continuing on, the NT scan done and dual test done were normal and showed low risk for aneuploidy and preeclampsia. She was started on iron calcium supplementation and received two doses of tetanus prophylaxis. The patient was on regular follow up with cardiology throughout her antenatal period. Yeah, okay. So these are normal in most of the hospitals now, especially in a hospital like uh, Manipal Hospital. You do a NT scan, dual testing, and preeclampsia, uh, you know, side by side testing happens. And then you would give the tetanus and supplements. These are, this is usual. And we always follow it with the cardiologist because we have that luxury at least once in a month. Okay. Now, how do you further plan the antenatal care for this patient? What is the aim of antenatal care? We need to prevent cardiac failure yeah. for the so patient. So something, each case has got a particular aim. For example, cardiac disease is prevention of cardiac failure. Anemia also, same thing. In preeclampsia, the aim is to prevent eclampsia. In uh, diabetes, it is to prevent uh, diabetic ketoacidosis and macrosomia in the baby. So this is the single theme. Uh, to achieve this, we'll go for, first of all, we have to diagnose heart disease. And then we have to do more often antenatal care, ideally. Right. Mm -hmm. So right from the yes. beginning, we should go for two weeks and then with the cardiologist, we'll have a checkup and we have to look for the factors that favor the failure. So here comes my mm -hmm. question. What are the factors that, you know, favor failure physiologically? Before that, I have written here, switch over from warfare into heparin. So what is this? Yes. Sir. Why is this? The hep yes, sir. Uh, the two... Basically, as blood thinners, warfarin has a teratogenic potential. However, it is long-acting. Whereas heparin is short-acting and we can control it, but it can it is an injectable form. So therefore, before 13 weeks of pregnancy, we are only using heparin for the patient. However, from 14 to 35 weeks, we can use warfarin. It is long-acting. It is an oral supplementation. It is easier for the patient. And then when we go to the later trimester, 36 onwards, when we want to titrate the dose and maybe we need to stop it at any time, it is better to use heparin because we can use its antagonist and it is short lasting. So there's less risk of PPH with the heparin. Good. So post delivery again, we have to start heparin if we have been giving her because otherwise she will have thromboembolism and other problems. So finally, when we discharge the patient, we can switch back to warfarin for the reasons what mm -hmm. you said. It is cheaper, it is oral, it is long-acting and things like that. So, continuing. Yes, sir. Continuing. Anomaly scan was done, which showed no gross congenital anomaly. GTT and fetal echo was done at 24 weeks, which showed normal findings. So, now, is it mandatory to do echo in a case of 
uh, in any antenatal case? In antenatal, in not all antenatal case, it is necessary. See, one of the clues in the exam is that when an examiner asks you, is it mandatory? Is it always should be done? The, the commonsensical answer is no. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's all you should always try to understand. So in what select cases we would like to do fetal echo? See, in Manipur, in we do fetal patient. echo for every single patient probably because sometimes it is made uh, given free because there was one PhD going on and things like that. But in every center, it cannot be made free. So we have to select our cases. So one such case is a definitely mother having cardiac disease. Why do you think so? Card. So Because if the mother, especially in congenital cardiac diseases, there's a chance that the baby also has it. And also like the risk of transmission to offspring from women is 4%. And then other indication for fetal echo, if there's increased nuchal thickness in the second trimester, that is more than 3.5 mm, combined tests which suggest Down syndrome that can have cardiac anomalies in the baby, and m mode scan, which is done from 18 to 20 weeks, which can show features of it. Yes, so these patients definitely require a cardiac echo. So continue that quickly. I think we have another five minutes left, and I don't think we'll be able to complete this today. We had some uh, initially glitches or we lost five to six minutes. Doesn't matter. Probably, uh, I would request you to continue tomorrow. Uh, though we said tomorrow a gynec case. If we cannot complete this, there's no point in stopping it uh, halfway through. So we have to continue with the management. Yes. So I hope you have yes, your free tomorrow. So you log in. Yes, at, absolutely. Uh, yeah, uh, you log in at seven o'clock, and then we will uh, yes. continue with your case today. We'll just go as much as we can. Another five minutes left. Continue. Yes, sir. At 26 weeks uh, gestation, the patient complained of rash associated with itching of the abdomen. There were no cases, there were no complaints of fever, vomiting, or loss of appetite. LFT was done, which was within normal limits. Hence, she was conservatively managed with topical lotion. What do you think it is? Then first, the, usually we are trying... We're trying to rule out obstetric cholestasis over here yes. and other so obstetric cholestasis is a sort of not a very serious condition. It's a you know temporary condition. It will be reversed. And the lefties are not very high. Sometimes they are in normal limit, as you could see, and it can be easily managed with topical lotions. But if uh, a lefty yes. is very high and bile salts are very high, then what do you give? Any idea? You deliver, yes. sir. You deliver. That's a trade name. But so something which is antagonizing this yes, and that can be given. Okay. So then you did a growth uh, scan. So growth scan is growth very, scan. very important in heart disease. Why it is important? Because as you've discussed yeah, before, yeah. the fetal complication is IUGR for very a patient good. with heart disease. Very good. So we need to look for growths, EFW yes. and Dopplers for the baby. Very good. So definitely we have to... Uh, do the serial growth scan, so which will uh, pick up the early setting of FGR. And also, if there is any other problems, we can uh, diagnose with this particular case, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Side by side, then, you have to uh, monitor uh, the mother. Yes, sir. So for her, echo was done. She was on serial cardiology monitoring, and echo was done at 30 weeks, which showed a normal, which was normal findings with ejection fraction of 60%. And she was advised to continue the same treatment and to review postnatally after six months. Okay, so that means they are almost certain. But here is the right time for me to ask you, which are the situations like you know why we did echo at 30 weeks? Because this is one of the important, crucial physiological situation in pregnancy where without any problem she can go into cardiac failure why is that 30 to 32 so, weeks. Um, because this is a time when the patient has maximum cardiac output when they're nearing the third trimester so that is their chances they'll go maximum into heart failure so we need to monitor them hemodynamic changes of pregnancy they can have a profound effect on heart disease which can favor failure Cardiac output also increases by 30 to 40 percent, especially around 32 weeks. And output further increases during labor, up to 50 percent or even more. And immediately following delivery, it can even go as high as 70 percent. It can go high. It can remain high for up to a week, wherein the mean arterial pressure raises by 4 percent, and there's a higher risk of thrombosis. So all of these are physiological causes we need to take into consideration. So that means obstetrician's job is very tough, isn't it? Once you book a patient, yes. you have to be on your toes for nine months. Patient can enjoy, but you have yes. to be very careful. 
because she keeps on deteriorating and it is up to us to find out whether she is deteriorating. And these are the physiological yes. periods where extra caution should be taken because of the previous slide told us that 32 weeks, there is maximum cardiac output. This is the time probably some people would like to even admit the patient. I'll come to admission policy mm -hmm. later. Labor, you just now said that it is extra stress. And soon after labor, there is extra stress because the blood comes from periphery, also from the uterus, another extra 500 ml. So all that will be an extra load on the heart and the heart can go into failure. So then, of course, up to one week after delivery, there are lots of changes happening. She will go into anemia. She can have infections. So you cannot rest even after the patient is delivered. You know, till she goes home, it is your responsibility. Sometimes even after she goes home, we have to be very careful about the patient. So elderly age due to increased peripheral resistance, that is additional factor. So what are the pathological factors that push her into failure? Pathological anemia and infection. Uh, because in case of anemia, the blood has decreased oxygen carrying capacity, so the heart has to work more. Similarly, in case of infection or preeclampsia, uh, yes, preeclampsia, there is peripheral vasoconstriction and heart has to pump against the pressure, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Sir. Similarly, diabetes. Then, yes, sir. or if a general stress on a body for which the heart has to work more, or if there's previous history of failure. So, as far as heart and pregnancy, they have a relationship like this. Pregnancy is bad for the stenotic lesions, coaptic irritation because they can go for rupture, Marfan syndrome. Again, aortic dilatation will be there. It worsens the right to left shunt, but only good thing is it tolerates the regurgitant lesions very well. I think uh, you have done extremely well today, Shreya. I, it's hardly another few seconds left. I would like to uh, thank you, first of all, for volunteering to present for the sake of the PG's 